Go. Okay. That's very interesting. All right. Well, at least we know we don't need to worry about mics too much, and unless looks like someone else just came on. All right, let's get started. Welcome, welcome. Let's get started. All right, let me see how this this clicker will work for me. All right. Clicker's not not working. I'll just use use the mouse. All right, awesome. How is everyone? Awesome. Fabulous. Yeah. Hopefully all good things. If there's negative things, you're probably not shouting them out. Horrible. Just kidding. Um, excellent. Well, welcome. Let's let's get started because we have a lot of great things we want to cover today. Let's start off with a mortgage minute. Um, let me give you a mic here to Neil. And I understand your... Um, bringing lunch in today lunch. So, so when that comes be, yeah. then make sure that we give her a, a thank you as well yeah not a problem it should be here probably in about a half hour or so welcome it's nice to see everybody's faces this morning um, or this afternoon or the in between or whatever <laughs> um i just wanted to get up and um kind of introduce myself again there's a lot more faces in the room than there was just even a month ago so um i'm Tanil rogers i'm with insulin um, I'm upstairs, so I do have an office here, and it has my name on it now, so come find me. Um, and I just wanted to um, kind of come up here and just kind of talk a little bit about rates. Um, they're not so great, but I have seen worse. Um, and the one thing that I, have you guys ever read a rate sheet? Have you guys ever had a chance to read a rate sheet from like UWM or from anywhere? We're, we're kind of missing my slides, so I don't really have that. We're having some technical issues. Um, but the interest rates are running anywhere from about 6% to about, um, you know, depending on what the loan to value is, depending on what the interest rate is, we could, you know, go all the way up to um, 8%. So a lot of it just depends on what your client is wanting to pay and what um, what's available. Um, but the the housing market in Utah has actually not gone down very far. Um, it's still very, very strong in Utah. So it's one of the strongest in the nation. I think number two. I think number one is Idaho. So, you know, number two is Utah. But um, it's still very, very strong. So there's definitely plenty of houses out there to be sold. Um, plenty of buyers that are still looking at buying. Um, and there's two things that... Um, buyers are looking for when they're looking to buy a home. And one of them is um, whether or not they're going to like the home and if it's their home. And then number two is whether they can afford it. So I am more than happy to come with you to any um, open houses to be able to discuss that with your borrowers or with your with your clients um, or even just be able to come to your initial consultation with them. I would love to be able to do that. Um, again, my name is Tanil Rogers. If you need anything, I, I've sent around um, our loan products to you guys. So my phone number is on that. Um, you can get a hold of me at any time, and I will be available for you. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Tanil. All right. We have um, Rob. Do you want to come up and uh, talk about Thanksgiving Heroes? Who's familiar with Thanksgiving Heroes? Yeah? I also learned that um, it is not Thanksgiving's heroes. Uh, I had to drop the S at some point. So I had to rebrand. <laughs> yeah. It was a vote yeah. by the board, no S. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, Thanksgiving's Heroes is a nonprofit I started nine years ago. And if you've – raise your hand again if you've been known about it. Take it out. So the Saturday before Thanksgiving, we're going to deliver food to families here locally. I have 3,000 families that are nominated by local school teachers – and um, we got, gather the food the morning of, and we deliver 65 pounds right to their house. You pull in in your car. We put the food in the back of your car, and away you go. I give you a name and an address and a phone number. You reach out and connect with them and deliver food right to their house. This is about hope. This is about connection. This is about creating an opportunity for your family to see how blessed they are. Right before the holidays, they go from entitlement to gratitude. In order to pay for the $420,000 worth of groceries that it's going to take in order to hit my goal, I need to do some fundraisers. We've already done a motorcycle ride, $420,000. Let me just say that one more time. 
That's a boatload of turkeys. There's Lori. Um, in order to do that, I have to host events. And we've had a motorcycle rally, which was wildly successful, a golf tournament, which was really fun down at Thanksgiving Point. Of course, Thanksgiving's heroes at Thanksgiving Point. The event that we're hosting on the 30th is called Rock Out Hunger. I saw this band play at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. They're going to be there on the 30th of September, and they're going to rock the house. It's going to be so much fun, and we're raising money in order to feed these families. If you'd like to be a part of this, please let me know. I have a flyer here. You can get on and register. You can nominate a family. You can donate. You can do whatever you want to get involved, but I can't do this without you guys. The reason that I'm a part of the Keller Williams family is because this has been a big part of what we do here at the, at the business center every year. We've supported and fed families. We've supported and fed other realtors who are struggling. This is important. This is making a difference in the world. I'd like to invite you to be a part of it. Invite your entire SOI. Make this your own SOI event. I have no ego in the game. Have a great time with this. Let me know if I can share the information with you. How's that? Love it. Love it. Questions. 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 We feed families clear down to Deshane now. This year, I'm going to feed 3,600 families. That's over 15,000 people that will get food on that day. Come be a part of that miracle. Is that nonsense? You pull in. When you pull in, there's 3,600 boxes in lines. I've got two different football teams or a motorcycle gang and the Women's Council of Realtors, just these different groups loading cars. It's, it's a carnival of awesome. So we feed families clear up to Logan all of Tooele County. We're in all the major school districts in Northern Utah. We're also in Cleveland, Dallas, Phoenix, um, San Diego, Las Vegas. We're growing them in five new states. And so this idea for me to feed 10 families has kind of taken off. Great question. Rob, show them the back of your shirt. I can see this. This is, uh, can you guys see that? Through his rippling muscles. <laughs> yeah. Will you, will you stop flexing for a minute? All right. Uh, 2015, 755 skipping a few years, 2019, 2,500 families. And then, yeah. I'm working on it. Every time I put out a new shirt, I think it's the coolest thing in the world on the board's like, that's just silly. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> uh, awesome, any other questions? I got a flyer right here. If you'd like one, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Oh, all right. Excellent. Thank Let's you. give Rob a round of applause. Such a great cause. Um, also, if you didn't know, um, and if you didn't see it on our Facebook page, Rob, uh, this last year won our Culture Icon Award for the state of Utah. There's only two agents in all of KW that are selected for this, and he was one of those two, was uh, featured on Mega Camp stage, walked across the stage, and uh, they're in Texas with a big, big old ribbon, a sash, a sash, a satch. Yep. Uh, yeah, he made that look good. Um, yeah, so come support, and we appreciate that, Rob. All a part of the culture. So family reunion, this is, uh, other than our Keller Williams, the, um, I just said it, Mega Camp. The other convention that we have is family reunion. This is uh, coming up in February. There is uh, an early bird discount. Uh, this is roughly around 20,000 agents show up to this. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, you there's classes that you can pick from different courses. You can go and choose, hey, if I want to really dial in on open houses or getting seller listings or um, how do I lead generate like a pro. There's amazing classes that this goes on for a few days. It's February 25th to the 29th. And it's still, even though the early, early bird discount is um, is gone, it's still, you can get a discount on the overall ticket. So um, this will be amazing. And the nice thing is it's in Vegas. So it's close, it should be fairly inexpensive to get there. Um, so we wanna have a, an awesome group to go down there. Anyone already planning on that? Yep, I'm counting about six, six, seven so far. And um, yeah, we'll have, we always do some fun stuff together as a group. Uh, referral contest, uh, we want to, um, incentivize the growth of the office, of course, and we just want to know who you know. That's really what it comes down to. So like you guys do with clients, who do you know? We're asking you the same thing. So we want people that are amazing, just like you guys who will share the same culture and the uh, growth attitude that we have here. 
So if you have other agents that are in another office that you would like uh, to refer them to our office, um, it is clearly incentivized. So we've got gift cards going out as well as uh, the grand prize is $1,000 if you um, are able to win that. You can also have uh, a lunch with Steph and myself. So that alone is worth way more than $1,000, right? Um, so the best way to do that is to text Steph. Um, you can also send it to me if you don't have her number. I will uh, forward it on, but we'll just make it as easy as possible for you. Um, we also have a TikTok page. Uh, is it called a page? I'm not on TikTok yet. I just barely downloaded it for this. You found, oh. it's an account. She's like, you're stupid. Um, what are you, and what are you, is it, it's my stage. And do you say, is it follow or is it a friend? Aaron, do you, is it follow or a friend? You know, both are great like it, whatever. Um, so go and find us on here and uh, share the love. Um, Steph has been doing some amazing things on there and we'll continue to push that out just for a little bit of a, a presence out there. So if you're on TikTok already, if you're not, download it. And I don't know, there's a lot of people that get business from this as well. Uh, Productivity Bootcamp. This is so at noon today. So right after this, when we finish up, stick around. We will grab lunch. I want to do it quick and then um, come back and sit down. It is like herding cats. Uh, you guys know what that's like. So please grab food, come back and sit down. And for uh, just a short amount of time, I want to share what this program is. The one goal that I want to share that uh, the purpose of this is to add one more deal per month to whatever business you're currently doing. So if you're doing zero, one more deal will be awesome. If you're doing 10 a month, one more deal would be awesome. Turn that into 11. So this is the whole purpose of this is add one more deal a month to your current business. And I'll share all the details uh, right after this at noon while we eat lunch. Book club is following that at 1230. This is jam packed today. You guys just uh, just stick around all day long. 1230 today. This is the millionaire real estate agent book. Um, this book, if you follow this from page one to the end and apply what it says in there, you will build a massive business. Simply put, so come uh, at 1230 for the book club. Coming up next week, we've got uh, Shoney. He's coming here. He's a team leader in the Orem office. Um, and he and I are actually swapping. So I'm going to go teach over in, in their office. Uh, he's going to come here, give a little bit of a fresh perspective. So that's next week. And Hi, guys. We are super excited to bring to you our four part series on the secrets to a six figure business. This is a four part series and the first class starts on September 20th in our Salt Lake City location. It's called Relationships to Results and we're going to help you build a database that can actually provide that six figure income for you. Yeah, so we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday the 20th. Excellent, and if you want autographs, Terry is in the back. <laughs> um, yep, the uh, Terry and Nick are fantastic productivity coaches uh, and they've got this excellent series coming up. So hopefully that, that was loud enough. Could you hear it a little bit over the speakers? Turn it up as loud as it could go. Hi, guys. Oh, we're watching it again. Um, ALC, you guys know if you're on the ALC, that's coming up next week. Mix and Mingle is next week on uh, Wednesday from 3 to 4. Come and enjoy. Just get to know each other a little bit better. And our principal broker class, guiding clients uh, through breach of contract. This is Thursday, the 21st, 9.30 here. Client appreciation event. You can tell I'm just trying to zoom through this. A lot of this you guys might know. So if there's stuff that you're missing details, you can find me, ask questions after, or look at the emails we send you. Um, client appreciation event. This is uh, next week, the 21st. So it, there's still an opportunity for you guys to invite your clients. This is all set up so that you guys, all you have to do is in, invite your clients and have them come. Uh, the cost is nine bucks a head. And I promise you, if you were to throw this yourself, it would cost a lot more than that. Um, yes. Um, my understanding is yes, that there would be it for, for purchase, not including in that, in that. Yes. Um, and they can go and get pumpkins and uh, the, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with Kuahara, they've got the corn maze, they've got um, a stage with uh, actors and a crew there that's really cool. Um, 
and set up little buildings that they can walk through. So really great event. And really, it's just meant for your you to connect with your clients in a personal way. Um, so all you have to do is contact your database. And, or if you even only have 5, 10, 20 people that are your A-plus clients, this is a great way to get in touch with them, and they love it. Um, even if this is all you do during the year is these events that we put together for you and invite your clients, it'll be a huge benefit to your business. Um, so invite them, and if you want more details, look for the emails that you have received, or if you haven't seen it, then let us know. We'll make sure that you have all the details. All right, without further ado, uh, we've got an amazing panel up here led by Robin, and uh, they're going to talk about our one thing. So let's give them a warm round of applause while they come up here. Okay, you guys, it says put your one think into action. And we're going to talk about how we can think about our one thing. So yeah, come on up here, you guys. Have a seat. Um, we before we jump right in with the panel, but I, but please, I'm welcoming the panel to make any comments here in the beginning. Yeah, sit right here. Um, I want to give you guys a very, very short overview of the purpose behind the book that Gary Keller wrote called The One Thing. Okay, so I have a few slides that we'll go through. That's fine. You can leave it like that. It won't go into... Okay, so our the, the tagline at the bottom is one thing is at the heart of every success. I've asked these fine folks up here to, to share with us in a few minutes something that they've done. And you guys, it could be something. Well, we have two new agents, so that's exciting. Newer agents and our experienced guy here, Rob, in the middle, that to hear what what some of their one things have been or currently are what the the kind of the whole purpose behind the book i think was part of gary keller's whole philosophy that instead of having a hundred things to do or 10 things or 50 things which we all have is there one thing that if you did that a whole bunch of other things would fall into place is there a is there could you focus on one thing that would make the biggest impact in your business or your personal life or your emotional life or your spiritual life Okay, he's a he's a big believer in having growth in all those areas. So here I put this up here, the purpose of the book. Okay, and just to wet your whistle to encourage you to buy the book. A simple, powerful framework for achieving extraordinary results in your personal and professional life. He shows you how to leverage a powerful question, which we'll get to, which I just referred to, to live a life with purpose, priority, and productivity. And I love that there's three P's. Like, I think I could remember that. What's the purpose? What's my priority? And how is it going to impact my productivity? Okay. And above else, this is again, something, uh, a recapping the book. You'll walk away with greater clarity on how to create a life worth, worth living. Okay, hang on. I don't know how to move the slide. Anybody? I'm using the arrow. We're... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Thanks, Marty. Hmm. Except it's not working. Maybe Tyler's in. Oh, which one is it? Okay. I just clicked the wrong one. Oh, I can do it. Okay. So this is the idea behind it. Okay. I just grabbed this slide, which I have in one of my classes that I teach. Where can you put a little bit of effort and get the biggest results? Okay. I like that. So that's helpful. Well, Tyler might have to do it. Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, let's, I wanna go through these guys. I thought this was so good. Okay, the six lies of success. And we're just gonna go through this quick so we can hear from our people. But I think this is a big deal. Okay, number first lie, everything matters equally. No. He said, achievers have an eye for what's essential. Two, multitasking is ineffective. And I think in the past, people used to brag about I'm a great multitasker. And in the end, it's like, okay, then they have six projects in their office that aren't done. Okay. Our brain can only do one thing at a time. A disciplined life is required. And at first I was like, wait, that's a lie. But what he's saying is a disciplined, 
habit is required, a disciplined habit, and maybe two or three disciplined habits as we grow in our habits. Number four, willpower wins. Okay, here's why he says that's a lie. Willpower is a finite resource. He's like, how many people at the end of the day choose like, in, in terms of here trying to eat healthy, choose a cookie or chips or a hundred things over an apple? Terry, thanks for the honesty. Okay, same here. It's because our willpower. So his idea is whatever your one thing is, do it in the morning. Get it done early. Okay, five, a balanced life. He says, why is that a lie? Because we have to put energy in certain places at certain times more than others. If you've got young kids at home, you've got to put some time there. I have no kids at home, so I can balance a whole different in a whole bunch of different areas. Sometimes our health needs more attention than our business. Our marriage might need more attention. Um, a hobby has a certain amount of attention. So his, his thinking on this is seek purpose, seek meaning, and not necessarily focusing on balance because then we're all off balance trying to get balanced. Um, and last one, big is bad. I don't know who says big is bad. Texas does not say big is bad. I'm telling you guys right now. I moved here from Texas. It's like, go big or go home. Um, Gary Keller's like, go big, think big, ask big, have big goals. And this was a quote from, from the book, To Live a Great Life. You need to think big, ask bigger questions, avoid incremental thinking. Sometimes we get stuck in, I mean, you need to know the next best step. I'm a big fan of that. But he's like, don't get stuck in getting stuck. Okay. Adopted growth, not a fixed mindset. Okay. So these are a couple of the things. And if any of these ring for the panelists, like if you guys want to touch on any of these, they might, you know, this might be part of what you want to share. So here's what he has in the book. Again, the success habit, which we're going to do one slide on asking powerful questions and having powerful answers, living with purpose. And I think we'll hear that from some of these, what you're guiding for. I feel like Rob, what he already presented I feel like we know Rob's guiding force because of his charity, his life. If you go to the website, Thanksgiving Heroes, and look up Utah, you'll see him and have a video of his story and why this started in his Texas childhood. And that guy has a guiding force, okay? Living by priority, which is what are you doing now that will take you to where you want to go? And that's how we can prioritize. Like, I have so many things to do. Well, what's the thing that's going to get you most where you want to go next? And then live for productivity. Success is born out of being productive. I want to share one thing. I just finally, not finally, I just moved to Keller Williams in last fall, but I hired a MAPS coach and my first session was massive. I got so much takeaways. But the one thing he said is, Robin, could you increase your productivity in less amount of time? Like, could you do more in three hours in the morning instead of in seven hours all day? And I was like, help me do it. Yes, I need that. And that's, I'm, I can tell I'm going to be learning about being more productive, but not being busier. And I'm super pumped about that. And then this is so good, you guys, for productivity thieves. To me, this is one good takeaway, really good takeaway. What steals our productivity? Not being able to say no. Like, I can't go do that because you know you've got some other commitments. Having the, being in fear of chaos, because sometimes that happens. And if we're afraid of that, we won't go into something that in the end has something big on the other side for health habits. This is massive. Okay. And then unsupportive environment. Um, I definitely came, I wasn't in an unsupportive environment in my former brokerage, but I felt more support here to be more productive, to have more connection, more education. Like this was a move up for sure. Thank you. Lori begged me for three years and here it is. And she deserves all the credit. Okay. And then there's three commitments to make, to live a life with no regrets, adopt a mastery mindset. And again, we're not even digging into these because we're going to talk with our panel, but if anything is like, Ooh, I'm interested in that. Find the book. It's a small, short book. It's a quick read. Adopt a mastery mindset, get really good at something. Okay. That's mastery. Seek the best ways to do things. What's the most productive, the most, most effective. Is there a better way? Are you struggling in something you're doing? Ask. That's why we have all these awesome people that work here. Ask some people, how do you do your open houses? How do you do lead generation? And I'm learning that in my coaching as well. And then be accountable for whatever your one thing is. Okay. So really quickly, the powerful questions and answers. I did want to share one of the things, the success habit. He's, this is what leads to the, what the one thing is. Okay. For every area in your life, you can see 
career finances, leisure, learning, relationships, and health. Identify one thing on a certain time scale, like for six months, I'm going to go on a date with my spouse every week, for example, or for six months, I'm going to call people for an hour every morning for your business, or for six months, I'm going to stop eating X, Y, and Z. Okay. Whatever it is. If you, so it says, if you can do it consistently. So the middle paragraph is the question for my career. Let's say, what is the one thing I could do for what today, this week, this quarter, that such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. That's the whole point of this book. Is there one thing that I can do for the next five, six months that if I do this every day or once a week, depends what it is, right? Every day or once a week, that by doing that, a whole bunch of other things will be easier or I won't need to do them. That's so powerful. And it takes, we've got to put some journaling, thinking, some time aside to consider that question, okay? And can then consider a powerful answer, okay? So, oh, there we go. Types of answers. He's like, you've got to have some specific types of answers, okay? A doable, like something realistic and probable, like a checklist, like every night I'm going to do this. Something that sets you up for an amazing morning routine, okay? Or every morning I'm going to do this because it's going to set me up for a great day. Or a stretch goal, something within your reach, but it's going to push you. And then there's the great answer, something beyond your reach. It's going to push you to explore and go all the way beyond your comfort zone. Okay, so this is the big question. I'm just going to leave this up. That's the, the guys, that's like a 1% review of the book. Okay. Um, and I want to turn it over to the panelists. Kale, let's start on the far end. Kale joined the, when did you join Emily and Todd's team? I believe it was in March, but yeah, something I've been working on is just time blocking the best I can and writing down my wins every single day because I tend to get pretty hard on myself. Um, so yeah, just uh, writing down my wins has been really big. Makes me feel, makes me feel good at the end of the day and just kind of um, writing down what I need to do the next day has really helped just uh, having that clear vision moving forward, so. Okay, and if you guys wanna ask any questions, just raise your hand yeah. to any of these people. I do wanna ask a question. Where do you write your wins and how many do you write? Um, depends on the day, because not every day, yeah, it's, kind of, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, just, uh, you know, some days I might write down three, maybe five, it just kind of depends on the day. Um, but yeah, uh, just, um, I usually write them down in my little notepad at the end of the day. So I have a little notepad by my desk that I write everything down and that's helped a lot. So I love that. What are they personal wins or professional wins or both? Both. Yeah, they're combined. So, and, uh, yeah, something I'm trying to implement too, is just, uh, taking time to feel your emotions. Um, and yeah, that's definitely helped me, you know, sometimes you just need to stop on the side of the road, do a little dance, you know, <laughs> I'm all about that. The people that know me know, yeah. <laughs> Kale, you better meet me and we're going to have a dance by the so, side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let me ask something else or a comment. This is a concept that's true for everybody on the planet. What we think about, what we focus on grows. Okay. Where you put your attention more comes. So I'm just noting Kale's choosing to look at wins at the end of the day. So what, what, imagine if you were doing that, how you'd feel emotionally. Okay. How would you feel about the next day? How would your, the end of your night go? You know, how would you sleep? This, everything we think about at the end of the day affects kind of how the night goes and how we sleep, which affects the next day. There is really high frequency in positive thinking and looking at our wins. And when you raise your level, we're all made of atoms and molecules, which have frequencies. That's what I'm talking about. When you attach to ideas with high frequencies, which are wins, guess what? You're letting off that kind of frequency. What's coming your way? High frequency people and experiences. It's awesome. Okay. I didn't know Kale did that, but here's what I've seen. Cause I follow him on social media. I'm like, that guy posts all the time about open houses and out showing homes and doing stuff. And he's a new agent. He's on a team. So that helps him 
have opportunities for open houses. I just see consistently every week. I mean, that's in my mind, I was like, he's got one thing. It's posting about open houses and going to new open houses. And he shared something else. So I love that. That's super cool. Okay. Anybody want to ask a question or comment on that? Okay. So at the end of the month, when many of us, our success is based upon numbers and you have not met those numbers, what do you say to yourself for just self-esteem and worth and I can do this next month? Because it, it can happen month after month and we're hard on ourselves. At least I'm really hard on myself. So what would you say to that? Um. Yeah, if I don't meet my numbers, then I just try to look at the numbers that I did complete, you know, and try to give myself credit for that and try not to focus on so much of what I didn't do and focus on what I did do. So that's been something that's been challenging my mindset is just looking at all the positive things I've done instead of what I couldn't do that month. So. Um, maybe you can take the numbers that you did have uh, and go, oh gosh, look at this one person that I met and the relationship that I'm building and the growth that that can spread and what numbers can that turn into in the future and put your energy into nurturing the really good numbers instead of trying to get so many of the numbers that might not equal as good as those good numbers. Oh, I love that too. So I'm hearing both people saying, Focus on the win, the gain, the success, and not on the lack. When we get stuck in lack or scarcity, that's a really low vibration. I'm going to go back to vibration, you guys, because everything's energy and we're all part of that and we feel it. So that low energy, if we focus on the lack, right, Carrie's saying, that's depressing. Yeah, it is. And Christy Lynn's offering, I love that. My daughter's taught me that when I'm like, oh, I... I did these things, but I wish I would have done these things. And every time my daughter goes, how great that you did these things. And that's what I'm hearing Christy Lynn. And you guys think about it. Every relationship, even if there's not a closing, if you make a new connection somewhere, that, it, that can lead to numbers. It can lead to money in the bank. It can lead to opportunities. I love that Keller Williams uses the word opportunities in command. Opportunity is such an abundance word. There's no limit opportunities. Opportunities always come up. So maybe you're at the end of the month, go, what opportunities did I take advantage of? And just hold it there. And then next month, is there something I might do differently to get more opportunities? Not to be better because we're doing the best, right? But how could I get other opportunities? And maybe being open in our mindset will actually create the door to like a new opportunity, which I might ask if you're willing to share it, Marley, at the end, you've made a new opportunity. That's really cool. That if you're, if you're open to sharing that, that would be cool. Okay. Rob. <clears throat> a book called the gap in the game by Bob Proctor. Have you read that yet? Read it. That's it. It resonates strongly with what you're talking about. Amazing book. Awesome. The gap in the game. Amazing book, changing your perspective on focusing on what's uh, winning, what what that feels like, staying in a place of of abundance. Um, the thing that I have done as I read the one thing, probably the most significant book in the uh, Keller Williams Library is the one thing for me. It's really changed my perspective on asking questions. A mentor of mine said the quality of your life is um, governed by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. And that one question What's the one thing that I can do right now that's going to make the most difference in everything? And then, of course, you want to get granule into your spirituality, your physical, all of the different things, because that's where you want to be, the doing the, the, the one thing that you should be doing. The, uh, the other part of the book talked about how can I have more efficiency than I've ever had in my life? How can I live my life with intention? When I read this book, having a life of intention was the most important thing. That was my word of the year, intention. I don't want to live anymore just drifting along in life. I want to be here for a reason. I want to have an intention on everything that I'm doing. And so I put together something called the MBP, the mini business plan. Um, and this mini business plan is my secret weapon. I'm going to share it with you because it's changed my life really quickly. This is my big. Hey, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thanks for sharing uh, this. 
So in the book, it talks about what's my one thing. And then your goal is to get to the next one thing into the next one thing as fast as possible so that you can have that three hours rather than six hours of doing all of the stuff. And I've done, um, Zig Ziglar talks about how people that are going on vacation can get everything done in eight hours that would take a week you know, has, and he says, how could we act like we're always going on vacation? If we could do that, how would our lives change? And I thought that was pretty powerful. The other thing that Zig talks about is the fact that we as salespeople will spend a lot of time thinking about when we're at work doing stuff that we, man, I wish I was at the pool with my kids, man. I wish I was on vacation. Did you see over there? Carrie's doing something amazing. I wish I was doing that rather than being here and being in the now. And then when we're at home, I'm spending the whole time thinking, man, I should have made those phone calls. I should have done those things. And so I'm creating a life where I'm never present. I'm never here and I'm never in the now. <clears throat> and as you know, the here and the now is the only place to find happiness. This is the only thing I can do anything about. So the MVP I've created, I write down the non-negotiable things that have to get done today. I try to keep the list below a dozen things. Sometimes though, it's a huge long list of things that needs to get done. As I go down the list, I know that I have to talk to 25 people today about real estate. I have to ask them one of the three big questions. Are you thinking about buying? Are you thinking about selling? Are you thinking about investing? If I don't do 25 conversations like that a day, I should be fired. I do that every day and I have that on here. I need to journal every day. I need to exercise every day. I'm having trouble staying on my diet. I need to get a certain number of grams of this and that and the other. I put those things on there because that's what's important to me right now. That's my one thing. As I'm moving through this, um, Uncle Gary says that we'll increase our productivity against our adversaries, our, our competition, up to 20%. I can have 20% more of my day. When I get to the end of this, I fold it in half and I throw it in the garbage and I go home and I spend time with my kids and I don't think for one second I wished I would have. I should have. I don't should on myself anymore. I get it all done. If something on this list doesn't get done and it happens and it rolls over into the next day, then I have to start thinking that it's time for me to start using leverage. What do I need to delete it? I'll either delete it, delegate it, or just do it. If it keeps rolling over because it's important, then it's time for me to hire somebody. It's, it's a key indicator that it's time to hire an assistant. Maybe it's an ISA moment. It's a moment for us to shift our gears and, and grow our business. I go down this list every single day and I start this list the night before so that I don't go to bed thinking, man, I got to call Lori. I got to call Lori. I got to call Lori. And I stay awake thinking, man, I got to call Lori. I want to get it on here because that has to be done. I do this first thing in the morning when my energy is the highest. After I get done with my meditation and my gym, I sit down at my computer and I look at this and I think to myself, the Keller Williams meeting. It's on here. I want to go there. And I, this is how I see it going down. This is how I see my presentation going. I have a listing appointment today. This is how I see it happening. When you see professional athletes walking into the gymnasium and they've got their headphones on, do you think they're just rocking out to music? They're visualizing their success in the very next movement. And I am a pro. I will visualize my success. I will see what will it feel like when I walk out of there and I've built a lifelong friend that has signed a listing agreement with me. They're going to trust me. They like me. They know me. They trust me. And they want to do business with me and refer everyone that they know to Rob Adams. That's what I do. And as I visualize these things and I see these things, does it happen that way? Absolutely not. But the odds of it happening because I see it happening because I put intention toward it go way up. Real estate is a business of managing this, Right? If we're not managing our mindset and our body, our schedule, we're not time blocking, we're not staying in the game, we're failing. And so your job is how can I manage this resource most effectively? The best way to do that is get clear about what has to happen today and be relentless, non-negotiables. When I write that on there, it's going down. If I tell you I'm going to do something and it makes it onto the MVP, don't worry, it's happening. Or I'll have a reason why it didn't happen. I tried and this is how it went down. This is the way that you can go to bed every night knowing that you did your very best and had a successful day because there's no one in this business that will pat you on the back and say, hell of a job today, Rebecca. Nice hustle out there. <laughs> Unless you call me, I'll do that. I'll be that guy. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, you're your best fan. But most of the time, we are our worst critic. And I want to give you the opportunity to cheer for yourself and create a runway every day, a plan, a mini business plan that will lead to your success. That's my big takeaway. People, round of applause. <laughs> uh, the girl in the back. Hmm. Nice.
Very good. Yep. <laughs> Me too. Uh. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for doing it. This is a life changer. This is a big deal because there's nobody saying, okay, now you need to prospect. You need to have these conversations. There's me. I said it. I've made that commitment to myself. And so I'm going to do that. Today, I'm going to be told no 25 times before I can sit the remote down, go swim in my pool, spend time with my families. I'll have those conversations. I'm good at no. Well, that's when I usually start it. And um, a lot of people will say, well, I'm writing the same things on there. I write on there all the time that I want to write in my journal or I want to write in there that then when you start to do that, when you realize there's a pattern, that's how you discover your why. If I'm writing this every time, that's my that's the rub. That's where I'm putting in my work. And you'll have a tremendous amount of movement in these little areas, even if it's spiritual. Writing in my journal is something that I want to do every day. I want to write my gratitudes every day because I know it raises my frequency and puts me into a place where I'm looking for things to be thankful for. I'm going to find the miracle today. I'm going to be the miracle today. And I'm doing that because I'm intentional about it. That's a long answer. But yes, I start at the night before or I can't go to sleep. Keeps me up. Anything else? Here. Okay. Tyler. Oh, thanks. Well, that's important. It's the title. Gain. Yeah. Gain, gain and the gain. Oh, the gap and the gain. Ah. Okay. And we've got a very new, very new, very cute um, realtor and and who I forget, someone referred her. You tell us, tell us about you, first of all, since you're new, we want to get to know you and then what one of your one things is. Okay. So I'm not super, super new. I kind of started when Kale did in March, April ish. But um, my name's Alexi, for whoever doesn't know me. <laughs> um, I am on coaching with Nick and Terry. They're awesome. And uh, my one thing that I've noticed that helps my business grow and just, is fun overall is social media. So obviously social media is one of our big things in this world right now. So I don't know why we wouldn't use it to our advantage. Uh, I noticed that I, that consistency is key on it. And if you want to, you know, grow your business and just stay in front of your audience and all of that, you just have to be consistent with what you're posting and post things that you, that people want to see instead of just random word posts. Sometimes when you just post random words, people don't usually read them. You know, you just scroll through and you don't even look at it. But um, I've noticed that um, I do like a lot of TikToks and I've got um, a lot of, what's the word? Track, uh, traffic, a lot of traffic through those. Um, so that's kind of my one thing that I've kind of noticed that I do good in. So <laughs> when well, we've heard from other agents then the past few months that are doing a lot with TikTok and building a big following. So again, whatever your one thing is, put effort into it. It will grow. And I feel like once that one thing's growing and happening and bringing results, there's probably something else. You know what I mean? It's not like everyone has to have the same one thing. Um, I just started a TikTok account. My daughter's shocked. She goes, you have TikTok? Because she knows I've been anti-TikTok. Aaron's giving me the peace sign. He's like, do it. Well, I love making videos and I love dancing and I love karaoke. And kale. That's why I'm like, I need a TikTok. I was made for TikTok. Oh, I'm kidding. We'll see what happens with it. Um, what? Okay. After kind of hearing, you know, from today as, as a newer agent, what are you taking away from kind of the conversation and what the one thing could be related to? Um, just something that you are really good at and like you are consistent with and just putting yourself, like making sure you do it every day and just 
it's kind of something that you bring apart into your business, you know? Um, so, yeah. I like it. Yes, Sarah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so the thing that I have found with Alexi's content specifically is it's not just random stuff. That what she posts allows me as a spectator to connect with her as a person and an agent. And so I think that levels up her credibility and her connection with her current clients and potential clients because it's not just random stuff. It is, and it's funny actually it's really a lot of it is really funny I show my my girls because they're teenagers but there's a method behind it that is helping people to get to know her better to connect with her so that by the time they're meeting with her for an appointment they already kind of know her and so it's just like a second or third meeting because they already have that connection from their perspective thank you that is a very great comment um to help us understand how that can, how social media can help us. Have some slides that show kind of the things that I do post if they are even on there. Erin, um, do you have any slides from her that you put up? Come take a look. Okay. While we're waiting for that, um, my one thing is very similar to Rob's that I picked up from the. Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, who talks about every morning and Stacy, are you still doing it, Stacy? Savers. Okay. Okay. There's an acronym, S-A-V-E-R-S, -E Savers. And his book, it is a thin book. It's, it is a Miracle Morning book. It changes your morning. It changes everything. There is a one called the Miracle Morning for Realtors as well. He, now he has some categories for different people in different positions um, in life, the, I'll give you the basis. It's very similar. What I'm going to add, what I liked that Rob has, but this list doesn't have is a list of non-negotiables. Okay. Hang on. We're going to see what she's got here. Oh. oh, I'm way excited to see this. Oh. Hang on. No, no, no. I'll come back to it. Let's see what you've got here. Okay. So I know this is what I post like on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about Facebook. So I kind of just posts on Instagram and it transfers to Facebook. <laughs> so the first one on the left is kind of like, um, do you like food trucks? So um, every Monday night in the summer, Harriman uh, City Hall has like the Hungry Harriman food trucks and they bring food trucks every Monday night from five to nine, whatever. So I thought it would be a good idea to post like what food trucks are going to be there that night. Um, just kind of gives my audience something to you know, do other than real estate related things. Um, and then the second one, I do a lot of like engaging posts. So I'll do like a poll on Instagram. I don't know if uh, you guys know about that, but it um, it's just a random question that says, which what's more important, the house or the price? And then there's a question on that, that people can just with a simple click say, you know, the house or the price, yes or no questions. And it's just engaging for them. It's like a fun little game, but it's also it shows me who is responding to those and who is, um, you know, playing along with my little games. <laughs> um, the third one is just something fun and shows that I went to go see Barbie. Get your new realtor Barbie, right? <laughs> something fun. And then the last one uh, I actually really liked doing. So that one was I was giving away free CMAs, which, as we all know, CMAs are not necessarily something you pay for. But everybody doesn't know that, right? So it's something to um, for them to be like, oh, you know, I'm curious of how much my home is worth, you know, and the link that I put on there just takes them to a Google form that they can fill out their uh, like their information. And I would get back to them later. And hopefully that would lead to a listing appointment. I didn't have many followers during that time, but I'm planning on doing it again. Uh, and hopefully. Yeah. So that's kind of like on Instagram and Facebook. Um, the next ones are going to be TikToks. So we can all cringe together while we watch those. <laughs> if they will uh, click. There's a different clicker. Tyler's got it though. Okay. These are- How about that master suite, huh? Maybe if I had someone to share it with. 
Lorraine, you are a beautiful woman with a lot to offer. Should we make an offer? It's a great house, but I'm just gonna be alone. Diane, you're not gonna be alone. You're gonna get alone. So that one, <laughs> so that one was a quote from Modern Family, I believe. And yes. uh, so it's kind of just something funny, something obviously people like to watch. Um, and then I think there's one more. Oh, maybe not. About that master suite, oh. huh? Well, it was um, it was the song Rockstar by Nickelback. And it was saying, um, you know, I want a brand new house off the soda. I don't even know the words. But it's um, it was just saying that first time home buyers wish that they want all these things, but they have, you know, a low budget. It was anyways. <laughs> yeah, so that was the other one. But yeah. That's kind of just the things that I post. Um, I love it. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is a great panel. <laughs> this is awesome. I already asked her. I'm like, Alexi, we got to tell Erin and um, Barry upstairs if she can do us a class on TikTok. And like, for example, um, I know how to do a lot of things, but I don't know how to embed a little Google Sheet yeah. for a market analysis. So I'm like, hey, yeah. but it might be fun to have you know, she doesn't have to teach 20 people 20 times if she does something here. Yeah, I could totally teach you guys how to make Google Forms and TikToks. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, that was awesome. Um, so I was just going to say, I was just going to tell you guys what, coming back to like a morning routine, savers with from Hal Elrod's book, the F, first S is silence, which can be meditation or prayer or something. Silence, okay? You choose. Rob mentioned that. He does that. The um, A, affirmations, affirming what you want or having like, I've had one for years, qualified buyers and sellers are always looking for my services and find me. Okay, I've had that one for a long time. It's been working. When I stop saying it, you guys, I notice a difference when I stop my affirmations. I notice it in my business and my personal life. So, so S, silence, which I choose meditation and prayer actually. Um, affirmations, V visualizations, Rob talked about the empower, empowering, like the empowering things that happen when we start visualizing the, what we want to happen. Okay. Or the end result. I've years ago, my, my friends here who know me have known me, I visualized paying off a, an absurd amount of debt that I had had for a long, 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 long time. And I visualized what that would feel like at the end of the year when it was paid off. I'm getting emotional because it was emotional to pay that much debt off in one year. And I imagined my husband, how he'd feel, how I'd feel, how our bank would feel, how our life would feel. And at the end of the year, it was paid off. And I attribute it to visualizing the end result, feeling all five senses at the end of your goal. That's a huge one. E, exercise. Rob mentioned. Also, that's on the list. Move your body whatever in whatever way. R, so again, I'm on savers. The R is read. And I can tell Rob's a reader. I'm a huge reader. Do we have time to read? You got to make time to read. Maybe you listen to it while you're walking. Maybe you're at the gym listening to a book. Maybe you're in the car listening to books. We do have times we can read. Maybe we're listening, you know. But So reading something uplifting or engaging or building your business or building your life, whatever it is. And then the last S is scribe, which is another word for write, which is journaling or writing your goals or writing your gratitudes. Rob, I just want to high five you. I all about all the things you do. And when I became an agent, I felt like real estate ran over my life. I got on a team. It got busy. I stopped going to the gym. I stopped doing all the stuff I used to do. And until I read that book, The Miracle Morning, and it gave me like a schedule. It gave me a program. It gave me a system of how to do stuff. And Rob's is the MB, MBP, the mini business plan. So it's the same thing. When I got that, that changed everything. And I got my life back. And I was able to balance, which we talked about, but I created more time for me to grow and do some other things in my life that would help me in my business. It's helped me a lot in my business. So my one thing is a morning routine. I'm trying to add a night routine. So it'll help me actually to put that paper by my bed and start working on it. I do it sometimes, but not every day. So I, I love the idea where Gary Keller's like, find your purpose for productivity. And what was the other P? It wasn't passion. It was, no, I said, we got productivity, purpose, 
and priorities, priorities. So that, I think that's what helped. What I like that you added, Rob, is probably the priority piece. What are my non-negotiables? I'm going to add that. And that will happen after my morning routine. I'll do the savers first, and then I go to work. And what are my non-negotiables? So I'm going to take that away today. Anyone want to share? We have two minutes. Any takeaways that you got from today or anything, one thing that has really helped you in your personal life or your business? We would love to hear from you. Okay. This is Stephanie, the new assistant team lead. I heard something that really resonated with me, a quote. It's, you don't have to like what you do to love what you do. So none of us like making calls or prospecting. It's not fun to hear no, but it ends to loving what you do and finding that one client or that one person that you change or you impact. So you don't have to like what you do to love what you do. That's awesome. Anybody else in the last two minutes? Anybody? I love the prospect. I'm just going to say it. I'm throwing it out there. Okay. Why? It's a challenge. It's like, I don't know if it, it's like hunting. It's like I'm out hunting and I'm, I'm catching the like toughest critter to catch. And that's a qualified buyer and seller. And I, I'm really good at hunting and the better you get it, the, the more you eat. Oh my gosh. That's a great analogy. Thank you. Very good. Marley, do you want to share something new that might become one of your big things? So my word for this past year has been connect. And I've heard a lot of people saying that. And I have adult children. And one of the things that I've really missed is being involved in the schools. I was very involved. I was, my kids went to charter schools. I was on the school boards. I was always on PTA, always doing and so I decided because I missed that. And since COVID, I've heard many of my teacher friends saying how difficult it is and the morale is kind of down. So I connected with the principal at the local elementary school. We moved about three years ago during COVID and, and I'm doing a superhero of the month where the teachers and staff can nominate an adult. I had a big trophy made with superheroes on I'll go to their staff meeting every month. Um, I'm most likely going to go to their parent teacher conferences and have a snack there for them. Just being more involved and, and helping morale and making new connections and friendships in the school system. By the way, it, it, I'm newer here at Keller Williams, but in the past, I, I have an alter ego and her name is Marvelous Marley and she's a superhero. And so I'll dress up in my superhero costume to present the award each month. Marvelous Marley. Isn't that a neat idea, you guys? So if you have a passion and Rob's is feeding people and Marley's is education and I miss the same thing. Crazy miss being in the schools. And, and anyway, there's something we all love that we might miss or we could add in to a connecting piece that will generate business. And maybe we do it for that, but I feel like it's the passion first for everything. And then people see that and go, wow, I love Marley's heart. I love Rob's heart. I would, I, I want to hang, I want to be by, I want to be by people. I want to feel this vibration. You know what I mean? And that's how we attract business. You guys, it is our vibration. It's our frequency. People are drawn to us. So what are we thinking? What are we doing? What are we saying? You know, and things will happen. So thanks for being here. Thank you guys. Big hand. Thank you, Robin and panelists. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, let's grab some food real fast and take a, a few minutes and then, uh, and then come back and sit down and I'll go over a few details on what the Productivity Bootcamp is uh, before the boot or before the book club at 12:30, and I promise we'll go through it real quick. So grab some food. Thank you again to Neil from Intralend for bringing that over um, and sponsoring the the meal. <laughs>